Mazda CX-5 and CX-50. Which of these two SUVs should you buy? That's what we're going to find out. Welcome to Carl Corner, where we help you, the consumer, master the process of car buying and car ownership. Over the last few years, the Mazda CX-5 has gained a reputation for being a very reliable, safe, and well-designed small SUV, and it has been gaining popularity year over year. But for 2023, Mazda introduced the CX-50, which appears to overlap with the CX-5 in almost every single way. So how exactly do they compare? What are the differences between them? And are they better SUVs to go for over other similar SUVs from brands like Honda, Toyota, and Subaru? Well, that's what we're going to find out. But before we get into it, remember, if you enjoy and get value out of this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications. Now, the first major difference between the two SUVs is size. As mentioned, the CX-50 was introduced for 2023. And compared to the CX-5, it's around 5 inches longer, 3 inches wider, and also a little bit shorter in terms of overall height. Another difference between the two is where they're manufactured. The CX-50 is manufactured in the United States in a brand new plant that Mazda shares with Toyota. Whereas the CX-5 is manufactured in Japan, which a lot of buyers will see as a major benefit when it comes to build quality. Another difference between them is who these SUVs are designed to appeal to. The CX-50 is going for more of a rugged, outdoorsy look. You can get it with more off-road accessories and off-road equipment, and it even comes in unique trim levels like the Meridian Edition, which even comes equipped with all-terrain tires. The CX-5, on the other hand, has less of an off-road look to it and goes for a more cleaner look. Now, even though this is a 7-year-old design, it has aged remarkably well and still looks just as fresh and modern as the day it was released, which is a huge testament to Mazda designers. Mazda has also constantly updated the CX-5 to help keep it fresh. For 2024, they've introduced a new trim level that's called the Suna in Canada or the Carbon in the United States. It's available in a few very unique and vibrant colors like the Zircon metallic paint like my test cars here. And it also comes with some really nice black accents, including a black grille surround, black mirror caps, and also 19 inch black alloy wheels for a really sharp and sporty look. But even though cosmetically the CX-5 and CX-50 may appear to be a little bit different, they are absolutely identical in terms of the drivetrain options that you can get underneath the hood. Both SUVs come standard with the same naturally aspirated 2.5 liter 4 cylinder engine that comes connected to a 6 speed conventional automatic transmission with standard all wheel drive. This engine produces 187 horsepower and 187 pound feet of torque, which actually feels more than adequate for an SUV like this. It's certainly not quick, but it feels more than adequate for daily driving. And not only that, but this is also a relatively smooth and refined engine. The 6-speed auto is also a very smooth shifting transmission, and a lot of buyers will appreciate the fact that Mazda still uses a conventional automatic transmission, as opposed to a CVT or a dual clutch, which are a lot more complicated. And that brings up another really important point about this drivetrain, which is its really strong reliability. Because you just have a simple, naturally aspirated engine and a conventional transmission, there are very few repair concerns. And the fact that Mazda has been using this drivetrain for over a decade now, it has a really well-proven reputation for strong long-term reliability. But if the naturally aspirated engine just doesn't have quite enough performance for you, you also have the option of a turbocharged version of this engine on the higher trims for both the CX-5 and CX-50. The turbo engine produces 256 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque on premium fuel, but you can get away with using regular fuel where it produces just a little bit less power. Now, although I wouldn't say that the turbocharged engine is absolutely mandatory to have, it is really nice to have all that extra power and much better performance. It really puts the CX-5 and CX-50 on the same level of more of a luxury SUV, something like the Acura RDX or the Lexus NX350. And with all that power, you do get a good towing capacity. The CX-5 is rated to tow up to 2,000 pounds with either engine. But with the turbo engine, you can tow up to 3,500 pounds with the CX-50, which is much better than other similar crossovers. With that said though, because these are relatively large displacement engines, the fuel economy is not really the best for the class. Both SUVs are only rated for around 22 to 28 miles per gallon, or roughly 9 to 11 liters per 100 kilometers. Now the naturally aspirated engine is rated for slightly better fuel economy than the turbo, but either way, 
if you want to have the best fuel economy, there are better SUVs out there. And unfortunately, neither the CX-5 or the CX-50 are currently available as a hybrid or plug-in hybrid, which is another disappointment. Now, there has been a lot of talk that within the next year or so, the CX-50 is going to be offered as a hybrid. And it's going to use a hybrid system that's actually borrowed from Toyota, which would be really great to see. But for now, there is no confirmation of that. So if you want to have a hybrid SUV, you will have to look elsewhere. Now mechanically, even though both these SUVs are somewhat similar, there are some differences when it comes to the suspension. The CX-5 has a more sophisticated multi-link rear suspension system, whereas with the CX-50, you have a relatively simple torsion beam rear suspension. Now in theory, the more sophisticated suspension of the CX-5 should give it better handling, but in the real world, I don't think the difference between the two is really all that noticeable. And I guess one benefit of having a simple torsion beam rear suspension on the CX-50 means that you do have fewer parts that need replacing down the road, so less maintenance. At the end of the day, these are both really fun SUVs to drive. They feel surprisingly nimble and well-balanced with really good handling. The ride quality of both SUVs is not too bad either, although they do both ride a little bit on the firm side, and they're not always the best at absorbing all the bumps on the road, I certainly would not call them uncomfortable. They both have this really nice ride and handling balance and sporty feel that Mazda has become really well known for. And that brings us to the interiors. Now as mentioned, the CX-50 is the slightly larger vehicle overall in terms of dimensions. But interestingly, that doesn't necessarily translate into having a lot more interior space. In fact, in terms of passenger volume in the front and rear seats, both SUVs are actually very similar. I would say though that the front seats in the CX-5 are a little bit more comfortable than the ones in the CX-50, which have this really weird seam that goes down the middle. Rear seat space, however, is fairly similar on both SUVs. And if anything, because the CX-5 is a little bit taller than the CX-50, it does feel a little bit more airy with more headroom. But because the CX-50 is a slightly longer SUV, the cargo area does have a little bit more depth to it. You just get a little bit more space in the CX-50 for fitting all your stuff, but again, in terms of overall cargo volume, both SUVs are still very similar. Now in terms of actual design, build quality, and fit and finish, both of these are really well designed interiors. You have the same basic gauge cluster, the same straightforward to use climate control setup, and the same infotainment system, which uses a rotary dial on the center console for controlling most of the functions. The infotainment system does have a pretty straightforward user interface, and you can use it as a touchscreen when using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but it does take some time to get used to, especially with that rotary dial. It has to be said though, when compared to most other SUVs that are in this price range, both the CX-5 and the CX-50 do feel like proper premium SUVs, and maybe even borderline luxury SUVs. The build quality and fit and finish is really excellent, and you also get some really nice color options to choose from. Not only a simple plain black or a pure white leather interior, but you can even choose between a really nice terracotta interior like my test cars here, a dark brown cocoa interior, and even a red leather interior. And those are the kind of options and color choices that you really only see on luxury SUVs. But again, the differences between the two are really not that great. I guess one notable difference is that with the CX-50, you do have the option of a panoramic sunroof, whereas on the CX-5, you can only get a normal sunroof, even though the distance that both sunroofs open is about the same. And when it comes to safety, both of these are equally strong SUVs. They both come standard with a lot of great active safety technology, and they're both rated top safety picks by the IIHS. That safety rating is especially impressive in the case of the CX-5, which despite being nearly a seven-year-old vehicle, is still one of the safest SUVs that you can buy in this price range. And with that, I think it's time to get into the pricing. The CX-5 is priced from around 30 to 42,000 US, or around 34 to 47,000 Canadian. Whereas the CX-50 is priced from around 31 to 45,000 US, or around 41 to 51,000 Canadian which means the CX-50 is around one to $2,000 more expensive than the CX-5 in the US and around three to $4,000 more expensive in Canada. So the question then becomes, is it worth it to spend a little bit more money to get the CX-50 over the CX-5? 
Well, I'm not sure whether it really is. Ultimately, both of these SUVs are so similar in almost every single way. There are very few differences between them that are really that noticeable, aside from the more rugged, off-roady look of the CX-50, and the fact that it does have a higher towing capacity with the turbo engine. Aside from that, there are really not that many differences. So the fact that the CX-5 has almost every single feature and benefit of the CX-50 for a slightly lower price, plus the fact that it's manufactured in Japan, which for some is a bonus, does make it the better buy out of these two SUVs. The only real drawbacks to both the CX-5 and the CX-50, which they both share, is that they're not the most fuel-efficient SUVs in this class. You can't get them as a hybrid or plug-in hybrid, and they also don't have the most interior space or cargo space. If you want to have a compact SUV that has the same amazing reputation for reliability and longevity, but with a lot more cargo space, you would be better off buying something like the Toyota RAV4, or better yet, the Honda CRV. And unlike the Mazdas, both the RAV4 and CRV are available as fuel efficient hybrids, which gives them another major advantage. But if you are okay with a conventional gas engine, you could also consider the Subaru Forester, which, much like the Mazdas, also has a great reputation for quality, reliability, and longevity, also has a really good safety score, and one of the best all-wheel drive systems that you can get. Ultimately though, you're really not going to go wrong whether you choose to go with the CX-5 or the CX-50. These are both exceptionally well-designed SUVs. If you're looking for quality, reliability, and safety, all wrapped together in a really sporty and stylish package, they really are two of the best SUVs that you can currently buy for the price. So which of these two SUVs would be your choice, the CX-5 or the CX-50? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also check out my other videos by clicking these links over here. Make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And if you need any additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, make sure to visit carhelpcan.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.